in tomorrow's big race, they're going to have to get some qualifiers out of this one. And now as they drive... Well, delighted to hear from you, especially since you have nothing disturbing to report. It looks like it's all over. Ah. That's fine. Come on in. Feel like a thief. Well, I don't like that word. What word did you have in mind? Oh, well, credit. Credit? Yeah, we'll pay them back from our winnings. Besides, the police are supposed to save lives. Yeah, but well, that's what they're doing. Let's go. Okay, cowboy. I get the feeling they don't want me racing. You haven't raced in a long time, Pat. Why should they worry? Well, you're really great for the ego. No, it just doesn't make sense. Some of the top race drivers in the country are going to be in this race. Well, maybe we should have just taken the 50 grand they offered us up front for the car in the first place. I don't think they're concerned about you winning the race. Well, then what are they after? Well, look at what's happened. Whoever's behind this has been tightening the screws little by little, bit by bit. I mean, first they tried to buy you out. Which you, if I may remind you, my dear friend, wouldn't accept. That's right. So then what did they do next? They roughed you up. Right. But they could have been rougher. And then next? They stole a car. They tried to cut it up in little pieces and then burn it up. What are you saying? Well, what's so special about the car? I mean, it's never even been in a race. Nobody knows what's under the hood. They're not after the car. They're after you. Well, you just said yourself you didn't think I was that big a threat. This has nothing to do with racing. Who are your enemies, anyway? I don't think I have any. Well, that's too bad. Oh, thanks. I would make it easier if you did have enemies. Hey, are you trying to tell me someone doesn't want me in Phoenix? That's right. Someone doesn't want to hurt me unless he has to. Exactly. And now we're almost in Phoenix. Exactly where he doesn't want you to be. Which means? Whoever it is, they're waiting for you. Who the hell could it be? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Well, how are you going to do that? Take an ad out in the newspaper? No. But you're close. There on top of that try down special, I believe will be the 57 A special, driven by Pat Mollison, picking up the final covenant spot for tomorrow's big race. This is Meredith McRae at the side of the Arizona 500, and with me right now is Pat Patterson. Now, Pat, you haven't raced in a long time. What are your thoughts on the eve of this big race? Well, uh, actually, Meredith, I feel pretty nervous. And a little old hat. And the uh, lustrous company, all these other guys. You look like Pat Patterson, but uh, you sure don't sound like him. Well, maybe that's because I feel a little out of place. The fact is, uh, I'm probably over my head. What do you mean? I mean, uh, you don't sound very confident about your chances in winning the race. How come? Well, if the truth were known, uh, I feel pretty stupid, actually. What do you mean, Pat? Well, I just turned down the chance of a lifetime. You know the old saw about bird in the hand? Well, I was just offered $50,000 for my car. Kind of wishing I'd uh, accepted the offer. Well, let's take him at his word. You want us to offer the $50,000 again? Mm, let's make it 75. For sentimental reasons. Well, the countdown is on. Less than 18 hours to go before the start of the Arizona 500. Some of the world's best drivers are entered in the race, and I'll be back bringing you latest updates on what's going on right here. Pat, you're going to drive in that race. Thank you, Meredith. Cold. I just can't. I'm sick. I got butterflies in my stomach. Look, I don't care if they're eagles. It's you and no one else. 
Who is it? Mr. Patterson, we need to talk with you. Suzanne, as you know, tomorrow's race is critically important to three drivers. Sorry on TV. It's not often somebody gets two chances at these things. We happen to work for an employer that's particularly generous. He's upped his offer for your car to $75,000. Just, uh, who is this employer of yours? That's not part of the deal. Well, let's make it part of the deal. That's good, Pat, good. All right, gentlemen, let's consider the options here. There's, uh, there's arson. Saw with a deadly weapon, attempted murder. Forget it. Or? Or simple theft. You could use a year in jail for a well-needed rest. It's called deal bargaining. All right. I'll tell you what you want to know. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 17th annual Phoenix 500. All concession stands and souvenir program booths. Mr. Fargo. Thank you. Mr. Fargo. Patterson. Seems like you two know each other. Cole, I've never seen this guy before. Well, he recognizes you. Call security. These men have no right to be here. We have every right to be here. Why did you try to keep us from coming to Phoenix? That's Billy Lucas. What? Billy. What happened? Why? <sighs> the only man who could have recognized me. Recognized you? I don't get it. Two of us were like this together. You escaped from that explosion. You went home? You never even told me you were safe. I wanted to tell you, but... It, things change too fast. Oh, wait a minute. I'm beginning to get the picture. You were in intelligence. You planned the convoy route. If there was anybody who had knowledge of a hit, it had to be you. Pat, you set me up. You set us all up. What for? I needed the money. So you planned to hijack a truckload of morphine. It got out of control. Eighteen guys bought it because of you. I'm sorry. It was a mistake. Yeah. Why don't you tell the wives and the kids about that? Ah. Make a heck of a team. Careful picking your friends next time. Yeah, tell me about it.
out of here. Well, I guess it's over for you, Lucas. I have to know one thing. If you'd seen me in the street, would you recognize me? Not a chance. Did I change that much? Yeah. You're fat. How's your arm? Guess it's okay. You didn't ask me to drive for you. I didn't have to. It's been quite a day. Yeah, what do you want to do to round it out? Well, in the old days, I would have said, let's go get drunk. Now? Why don't we go get drunk? The car's not going to make the race anyhow. My friend, you've already won the race. I feel like a big load's been lifted off my shoulders. Well, you had to exercise those demons. Well, you showed me how. Now all I gotta do is figure out how to pay for one truck, a trailer, and three police cars. Don't forget the bail money Terry advanced you. Oh. Well, I've been thinking. Maybe there is a way we can get that money for you. I don't read you. Well, let me spell it out. You agree the car has potential? Yeah. And you agree I'm back in my old racing form? Yeah. Well, and all we got to do is get the car back in shape. You know, Daytona comes up pretty quick. How are you going to do that with one hand? By taking a page out of the Colt Seaver's psychological engineering manual. You make about as much sense as Howie. Well, what I mean is, this time I watch while you work. I duck and you fight. I rest and you drive. Uh, that's enough eyes. What kind of partnership is that? Something like ours. Thank you.